So we finished our first part of the course about six months ago. So it is important that we warm our knowledge of the previous chapters first before we go to the next chapter, that is chapter 4. Now chapter 1 of the manual, the book called Abhidhammata Sangha, the original Pali. So chapter 1 deals with what are called chittas, or types of consciousness. Types of consciousness or consciousness is one of the four ultimate truths. So the other three are mental factors, matter, and nibbana. And chitta or consciousness is divided into 89 or 121 types. So there are akusala chitas, ahituka chitas, and so on. So akusala chitas are those that are called unwholesome consciousness. That means these uh, types of consciousness are accompanied by unwholesome mental states. You know that mental states or chetasikas are treated in the second chapter. There are akusala chetas first and then ahituka chetas, rootless consciousness, like seeing, hearing and so on. And the third Division is Kama Vachara Sobhana Chitta. They are called Sobhana or beautiful consciousness because they are accompanied by beautiful mental factors. Akusala Chaitas, Ahituka Chaitas, and Kama Vachara Sobhana Chaitas belong to the class of sense fear consciousness. They are experienced mostly in human realm and four woeful states and six celestial realms. And after the Kama Vajra Sobhana Chaitas, we have Rupa Vajra Chaitas. Rupa Vajra Chaitas are what now people know as Jhana. Chaitas. So jhana jitas are the higher states of consciousness. They are higher than the uh, the ones called akusala, ahituka, and kama vajra. So in order to get the rupa vajra, kusala chaitas, we need to practice samatha meditation. So through the practice of samatha meditation, one can experience what are called rupa vachara chaitas or jhana chaitas and they are divided into kusala vipaka and kiriya so wholesome resultant and functional types of consciousness and these rupa vachara chaitas frequently arise in the realm of Brahmas, Rupa Brahmas. So that is why they are called Rupa Vachara Chaitas. But it doesn't mean that they do not arise in mm, sensual realms also. And next is Arupa Vachara. Arupa is another name for Nama. So it is called immaterial realm. The types of consciousness belonging to immaterial realms. They are also jhana chaitas. So they are higher than the rupa vajra chaitas. Because rupa vajra chaitas take the rupa or matter as object, but arupa vajra chaitas take concepts and the other types of consciousness as object. So the Arupa Vajra Chaitas are higher than Rupa Vajra Chaitas. And they mostly arise in the realm of Brahmas, 
uh, who have no uh, physical body. It is said that in the realm of immaterial Brahmas, there are only Chaitas and Chaitasikas, or consciousness and mental factors. Now, up to Arubha Vajra Chaitas are called mundane Chaitas. So, Akusala, Ahituka, Kama Vajra, Arubha Vajra, and Arubha Vajra belong to mundane realm or mundane sphere. And above them is Lokuttara Chaita. That means transcending the world. Transcending the world means transcending the world of five aggregates of clinging. There are two categories in the Lokuttara Chaita. The first is wholesome and the second is resultant. The wholesome Supramundane or Lokutra Chaitas are path consciousness. And the resultant Supramundane Chaitas are the fruition consciousness or Phala consciousness. They arise at the moment of enlightenment. So at the moment of enlightenment as a result of the practice of Vipassana the path consciousness arises and when it arises it takes Nibbana as object and it eradicates mental defilements and the path consciousness is immediately followed by fruition consciousness or resultant consciousness So altogether there are 89 or 121 chaitas. Now, if you remember, how many Akusala chaitas are there? 12. And Ahituka or rootless chaitas? 18. Right? You, you, you can uh, look back in the book. Please turn to page 28. So mundane chaitas 81 and, uh, and under them there are sense fear chaitas 54 sense fear chaitas in Pali they are called Kama Vachara and under the sense fear chaitas 54 sense fear chaitas <coughs> there are unwholesome chaitas 12 unwholesome chaitas or 12 akusala chaitas and under the 12 Akusala Chaitas, there are three groups. From number 1 to 8, greed-rooted Chaitas. Chaitas that are accompanied by greed. And number 9 and 10, hatred-rooted Chaitas. So Chaitas accompanied by hate or anger. And number 11 and 12, delusion-rooted Chaitas. So Chaitas accompanied by delusion or moha. So greed is called lobha in Pali and hatred, dosa and delusion, moha. So greed rooted chaitas are eight, hatred rooted chaitas are two and delusion rooted chaitas are two. Altogether there are twelve chaitas that are called unwholesome chaitas. So we may call them bad chaitas. So when we are attached to something or when we are angry or when we are deluded uh, one of these types of consciousness arise in our minds. And under the 54 sense fear chaitas th there is another group called rootless chaitas. There are 18 of them. Rootless chaitas are called ahetuka chaitas. Hetu means root and a means no. So Chaitas without roots, without concomitant roots, are called rootless chaitas. And there are three groups of rootless chaitas. So number 13 to 19 or 7 are called 
unwholesome resultant. That means result of unwholesome karma. And number 20 to 27, wholesome resultant. That means result of wholesome karma. And 28 to 30 are called rootless functional. Now, for example, number 13, when we see something, there arises in our mind seeing consciousness. And that seeing consciousness belongs to the first group and wholesome result. And that, that is when we see something we don't want to see, when we see something frightful, when we see something ugly, then the seeing consciousness arises and that seeing consciousness is uh, the result of unwholesome karma in the past. So when we see something we want to see, when we see something beautiful, when we see something good, then again another seeing consciousness arises and that seeing consciousness is the result of wholesome karma or good karma in the past. Those belonging to the third group, we will meet them when we uh, go into the fourth chapter. And functional means they are not wholesome, they are not unwholesome, they are not resultant, but they just arise and disappear. Mostly functional consciousness arise in the minds of Arahants and Buddhas. Again, under sense fear chaitas, there is another group, and that is called sense fear beautiful chaitas. So there are 24 sense fear beautiful chaitas. The first group of eight are wholesome sense fear chaitas. Now, when you pay homage to the Buddha, when you practice dana, uh, when you when you keep and moral precepts, then one of these chaitas arise in your mind. So, they are called sense, fear, wholesome chaitas. And the exact result of these eight, number 39 to number 46, are called sense, fear, result and chaitas. And the same uh, type of consciousness that arise in the minds of Buddhas and Arahants are called sense, fear, functional chaitas. So, each consists of eight chaitas, and so we get 24 sense fear beautiful chaitas. So, on the screen, you, you find Kama Vajra, Sobhana chaitas, they are the same. So, under the sense fear chaitas, 54 sense fear chaitas, we have unwholesome rootless and sense fear beautiful three groups parallel with sense fear chaitas there is another group called fine material sphere chaitas so they are rupa vajra chaitas there are 15 of them first five are called fine material sphere wholesome and the second, fine material sphere resultant. And the, the third five, fine material sphere function. As I said before, these types of consciousness arise when you get jhana. And another group is twelve immaterial sphere chaitas. They are called immaterial sphere because there is no matter in that sphere. And they are three groups of four each. So number 70 to 73, immaterial sphere, wholesome consciousness, and then the second group, immaterial sphere, resultant, and third group, immaterial sphere, functional consciousness. So functional consciousness from sense sphere, beautiful, fine material sphere, and immaterial sphere arise only in the minds of Buddhas and Arahants. So up to now, when we add up 54, 15, and 12, we get 89 
types of consciousness, 81 types of consciousness that are called mundane chaitas. And then another group, supramundane chaitas, there are 8 or 40. Now, supramundane chaitas are divided into two groups. The first group is wholesome chaitas, and second group, resultant chaitas. So these types of consciousness arise at the moment of enlightenment. Now there are four stages of enlightenment and so there are four types of consciousness for wholesome chaitas and four types of consciousness for resultant chaitas. Now the first one is there here stated as path of stream entry. Now you may have heard of the Bali word Sota Panna. So the first is called Sota Pati Maga. And the second path of once returning is, in Pali it is called Sagadagami Maga. And the third path of non-returning Anagami Maga and the last the last called path of Arahanship. And the supramundane resultant chaitas consists of the fruits of the same, the fruit of st stream entry, fruit of once returning, fruit of non-returning, and fruit of arahantship. Each one of these can resemble the five fine material sphere consciousness. So when we multiply each one of these 8 by 5, we get 40. So there are 8 or 40 supramundane chitas or supramundane types of consciousness. So altogether, there are 89 or 121 types of consciousness. Now it is important that you are familiar with these 81 types of consciousness. I hope you, you, you have the chart with you. <laughs> oh, yes. So that is the one you, you need to be familiar with. I think you, you attended the, the class last time, right? So you are familiar with this, the chart. And you should be able to to remember this without looking at the at the chart. <laughs> you, you can do it. It, it. It's not that difficult. So if you do it a little a day, one column a day or two columns a day, then you can get it in in one week. So it is important that you are familiar with this because. Uh, we will have to refer to the consciousness, types of consciousness again and again when we go along the, the course. So, suppose I will say receiving consciousness. Then when I say receiving consciousness, uh, you should be able to, to identify on the chart which consciousness is meant. Then you see clearly and then you understand clearly. If you do not remember, then it will be a little confusing for you. So if you have forgotten the chart, please uh, do it again. I mean, memorize it again. It will be very helpful. I think we, I can skip jhana and jhana factors. <laughs> It, it will take too long. So, and then removal of feathers by different magas. I'll skip these two. So, I want you to be familiar with just the chart and then to be able to identify each one like this is accompanied by joy associated with wrong view, unprompted, prompted, and so on. Okay, let's go to the second chapter. Now, the second chapter deals with 
what are called jit seekers, mental factors. Mental factors are mental states that arise uh, with citta. So whenever citta arises, jit seekers also arise. How is citta defined? What is consciousness? What is citta? Citta is the awareness of the object, and this is uh, how citta is defined. So citta is some mental state that is aware of the object, and here aware means just a mere awareness of the object, not like awareness in practice of meditation. Only when there is awareness of the object can there be contact with the object, can there be experience of the object, can there be attachment to the object, or can there be hate towards the object, and so on. So that is why Jita is said to be the forerunner of all mental states. Now the gentleman who who introduced uh, all the reverend? Yeah, talk about the first verse in Dhamma Bada, right? Mano Pubangama Dhamma. So that means Jita is the forerunner of all mental states. Jita is the leader of all mental states. Jita is the chief of all mental states. Now, Jita and Jita seekers arise together at the same time. Although they arise at the same time, Jita is said to be their leader. And also, it is called forerunner. But not that it arises first and then Jitisikas follow it. Because Jita and Jitisikas arise together or simultaneously. But because there can be no Jitisikas without the awareness of the object, the awareness of the object is said to be the chief of all mental states. So these mental states are called in Pali Chetasikas. Those that are dependent on Cheta for their arising. And Chetasikas are divided into ethically variables. That means they can be associated with wholesome and unwholesome. So they, they are variables. Sometimes they arise with wholesome chaitas and sometimes they arise with unwholesome chaitas and so on. And they are called in Pali Anya Samana, the common to the other. And these ethically variables, there are 13 of them and they are divided into two groups. The first group is called universals. That means common to all chaitas. Now there are, let's say, 89 chaitas. So there are seven chaitasikas that arise with each of these 89 chaitasikas. So whenever a type of consciousness arises, these seven also arise. So they are called universals. In Pali they are called Sabba Chitta Sadharana. And there are seven of them. And the second group is called occasionals or in Pali Pekinaka. Now they will arise with some types of consciousness only, not with every type of consciousness. So there are six of them. Please turn to page 79 in the book. Now there you see the list. Ethically variables, 13. And universals, 7. And they are 1. Contact 2. Feeling 3. Perception 4. Volition 5. One-pointedness of mind 6. Life faculty and 7. 
attention. So these seven are called universals. That means every time a type of consciousness arises, all these seven also arise. And then second group is called occasionals, and there are six of them, and they are initial application of mind, sustained application of mind, decision, energy, zest, zest is in Pali, PT, and desire, uh, desire means just a desire to do. It is not attachment. It is a will to do, and sometimes it is uh, translated as coordination. So these six are called occasionals because they arise with only some types of consciousness, not with every or all types of consciousness. So the universals and occasionals are collectively called ethically variables, or in Pali they are called Anya Samana. Now the next group is unwholesome mental factors, unwholesome chetasikas, and there are 14 of them. Among these 14, there are four that are called unwholesome universals. That means they arise with all unwholesome chetas. Now if you go back to the chetas, you see there are 12 unwholesome chetas. So these four, uh, number 14, 15, 16, 17, arise with every one of those 12 unwholesome chetas. The first is delusion, in Pali it is moha, 15, uh, shamelessness, 16, fear, fearlessness of wrongdoing, and 17, restlessness of mind. And then the other group, unwholesome occasionals, now greed and others, they will arise with some unwholesome consciousness only, not with each and every uh, type of unwholesome consciousness. So they are greed, so greed, attachment, desire, they are all same. And 19 is wrong view, so taking things to be permanent and so on, or taking that there is no wrongdoing uh, when you kill a being and so on. And conceit, it is pride, hatred or anger and envy, jealousy of other people's success or other people's prosperity and avarice. Avarice is intolerance of one's property being common to other people. Suppose I own this thing. I want to keep it only to myself. And if anybody makes use of this, I don't like it. So I have some kind of ill will or anger. So that is what is called avarice here. It is some very, very close to stinginess. But stinginess is attachment to the, to the thing. But this is maybe based on attachment, but not attachment. Because this is a one kind of ill will. So I don't like when somebody comes and makes use of it. I don't want to share this with uh, other people. So that intolerance of one's property being come on to other people is what is called avarice or in Pali Macharya. And then worry, worry here means regret. Regret for something good you did not do in the past and regret for something wrong you did in the past. So both are called regret or remorse. And then sloth and torpor, and that is sleepiness and doubt. 
doubt about the Buddha, the Dhamma Sangha and so on. So from number 18 to number 27 are called unwholesome occasionals. Among them, 18, 19 and 20 arise with eight, uh, some of the eight types of unwholesome consciousness accompanied by greed. Number 21, hatred, envy, avarice and worry to number 24. These four arise with two types of consciousness, unwholesome consciousness accompanied by hate or hatred. And sloth and toba accompanies those types of consciousness that are prompted. And doubt is just doubt. So these are unwholesome mental factors. And the next group is beautiful factors. They are good mental factors, good chetasikas. And there are 25 of them. Among them, uh, the first group is called beautiful universals. That means these 19 chetasikas arise with every beautiful consciousness. So they are faith or confidence, mindfulness, shame, shame for wrongdoing, fear of wrong, fear uh, to do wrong, non-greed, non-hatred, and then neutrality of mind. And then tranquility of mental body, mental body means chetasikas. Tranquility of consciousness, lightness of mental body, lightness of consciousness, malleability of mental body, malleability of consciousness, wildiness of mental body, wildiness of consciousness, proficiency of mental body, proficiency of consciousness, rectitude of mental body, rectitude of consciousness. So these 19 are called beautiful universals and they, they will arise with every type of beautiful consciousness. That means wholesome consciousness, and some resultant consciousness and functional consciousness. The next group is called abstinences, abstaining from something. So right speech means abstaining from wrong speech, right action, abstaining from wrong action, and right livelihood, abstaining from wrong livelihood. So these three are called abstinences. And then the next two are called illimitables. Uh, I would, I would call, call them limitless. They are called limitless because the object they take must be limitless. Now there are only two shown here, compassion and appreciative joy. So when you practice compassion, you must take all beings as the object of compassion. There should be no limit of beings you take as object. Appreciative joy the same. Appreciative joy means uh, you are happy for when other people uh, are successful, when other people are prosperous, when other people are happy. These two are among the four four states that are called Brahma Vihara noble abiding or Brahma abiding the other two are included in the, uh, the 19 you know the four Brahma Viharas loving kindness Compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. So, among the beautiful universals, 19 beautiful universals, number 33, non hatred, is loving kindness. And number 34, neutrality of mind, is equanimity. Since they are included in the beautiful universals, here 
we have only two limitless ones but all, if we add the other two to these two we get four and these four are called Brahma Viharas or noble abidings or divine abidings and the last one is non-delusion non-delusion means wisdom faculty that is understanding knowledge wisdom so if we add all these up ethically variables 13 unwholesome 14 and beautiful 25 we get 52 jitasikas or 52 mental states and these 52 mental states come into combination with the 89 or 121 types of consciousness that means the first type of consciousness now the first type of consciousness arises with 19 chetasikas that we have to find out which are the 19 so you have to go to another chart to, to know this so in the book it's on page 112 so that chart will uh, tell you so, uh, what chetasikas arise with what chetas or what chetas arise with what chetasikas so there are two kinds of combination of chetas and chetasikas so the first one is called method of method of combination and the second method of association but I would prefer to call cheta chetisika combination and chetisika cheta combination that's easier to understand so chetisika uh, cheta combination means you take one chetisika and you try to find how many chetas uh, it is associated with cheta chetisika combination means you take one cheta and then find out how many jtcs arise with it you should be familiar with this combination both cheta jtcs combination and jtcs cheta combination when studying thought processes we may apply this to the uh, types of consciousness contained in the thought processes or we may just do one or two of them as an exercise now let us go to chapter 3 chapter 3 deals with chitas primarily Chetisikas are not expressly treated in the third chapter but when Chetas are treated Chetisikas are also treated so we must understand the Chetisikas also but it, it will be difficult to find out the Chetisikas so we will take just the Chetas in this chapter this chapter is divided into six sections the first section deals with Vedana or feeling that means it divides the, the 89 or 121 types of consciousness into those accompanied or uh, those associated with joyful feeling or pleasant feeling those with unpleasant feeling and those with joy those with painful feeling and those with neutral feeling now if you look at the uh, that small chart now you will see that the those with red color are those that are accompanied by somanasa or 
joyful feeling. And, and the, the blue colors are those that are accompanied by equanimity or neutral feeling. And then red cross and green cross, right? So the green cross means this is the, the bodily painful feeling. That means painful feeling connected with the body. And red cross means bodily pleasant feeling. So there are five kinds of feelings here. Oh, two green ones, uh, they, they are accompanied by hate or unpleasant feeling. So we must be able to divide the 89 or 121 types of consciousness according to these five kinds of feeling. So if you are familiar with the, this a small chart, the card, then you know at a glance what types of consciousness are accompanied by joyful feeling, what by hatred and so on. And then the next section is analysis of roots. That means the 89 or 121 types of consciousness are divided with regard to roots. So before we understand the analysis of roots, we must understand what are the roots. Now how many roots are there? Six roots. So what are the six roots? Loba, Dosa, Moha. Now greed, Hatred, delusion, and then aloba, non greed, a dosa, non hate, and a moha, non delusion. So these six are called roots, or in Pali they are called hetu. And types of consciousness on this uh, chart are accompanied by sometimes by three roots, or sometimes by two roots sometimes by one root or sometimes by no roots at all. Now we must, we must know about them. Now the second, third and fourth columns, they are Ahituka. Now you see the words Ahituka at the bottom. So these three columns are those that are not accompanied by any root. So they are called rootless. Now the others are either accompanied by two roots or one root or three roots as the case may be. Uh, you have to find out all these from, from the book. And then the next section is the section of functions. So the 89 or 121 types of consciousness are an analyzed by way of functions. Now there are different functions assigned to uh, different types of consciousness. Now, when you study the thought process, you will have to refer to uh, this section again and again. Some types of consciousness has a function of turning to the object. Some has a function of accepting some has investigating, some determining, and some thoroughly enjoying the object and so on. So these are called the functions. And just as in an office, different people have different functions. So in the 89 or 121 types of consciousness also, each one has its own function. And we must understand what function a particular consciousness does. Now, for example, the first column. The first column is what? Akusala. Uh, so all of them have the function of Jawana. Jawana means full experience of the object. 
So something like that. So we need to understand the functions of others also. And then next section is analysis by doors. Doors are those through which the objects are presented to us, to the mind, and through which different types of consciousness arise. So they are called doors, figuratively. Now the eyes are called doors. The ears are called door because seeing consciousness arises through the eye door and hearing consciousness arises through the ear door and so on. So they are called doors. So how many doors are there? Five or six? Six doors. So eye door, ear door, nose door, tongue door, <laughs> not mouth. <laughs> Tongue door, body door, mind door. So there are six doors. So through these six doors, the objects are presented to us. And we experience the objects through one of these six doors, depending on what kind of object that that particular object is. For example, a visible object, something we can see. So when we see something there arises seeing consciousness in our mind. And that seeing consciousness takes that visible object as object. Because there is the uh, visible object, there is the uh, seeing consciousness. And because there is the eye, there is a seeing consciousness. So seeing consciousness is said to arise through the eye door. The same with hearing and so on. But when you don't see, you don't hear, but you just think of something, you just imagine, then the object is presented to your mind through the mind door. So there are six doors through which the consciousness arises or through which the objects are presented. And we have to find out uh, through what door a particular type of consciousness arises. So these are treated in the third chapter. And the next section is analysis by objects. Aramana Sangha. Objects are divided into how many? How many objects are there? How many kinds of objects are there? Six. Uh -huh. Visible object or things you can see and things you can hear, things you can smell, you can taste, you can touch and you can know. So there are six kinds of objects. And different types of consciousness take different types of objects. And we must know what kind of object a particular consciousness takes. These are treated in, in the section on Aramana in the third chapter. Again, when you see something, there is the thing which you see and that is the object and you see it through the eye, so the eye is the door and then seeing consciousness is the consciousness so seeing consciousness functions as seeing so seeing is its function so in this way uh, we, we find out the particulars of the individual types of consciousness in one uh, given thought process so there are many thought processes and we can spend a lot of time just trying out to see the types of consciousness with reference to the function, doors, objects and so on. 
and among the objects there are objects called concepts conceptual objects now we went through the jhana chaitas jhana chaitas take the concepts as object the earth disk the mental image of earth disk and so on are called conceptual objects and when you get jhana the, your jhana consciousness takes that conceptual object as object and so on and the last section deals with basis so it is called analysis of basis or in pali what to sangha basis are something like the seat of consciousness depending on them consciousness arises so how many bases are there you just say six <laughs> there are six doors six objects six bases so the eyes are called eye base the ears ear base nose nose base tongue tongue base body body base and the last one is not mind base <laughs> and the last one is called heart base now the doors and bases the eye door and the eye base are the same ear door and ear base nose door and nose base tongue door and tongue tongue base body door and body base they are same but mind door and heart base they are different mind door is mental mind door is mm, the the bhavanga consciousness but heart base is the heart physical heart in our body and different types of consciousness based on different uh, different bases so seeing consciousness is de- 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 dependent upon i base and hearing consciousness depend on a bond ear base and so on and then some types of consciousness are dependent on heart base and we will have to find out which type of consciousness in a particular thought process is dependent upon or what kind of base so when we study the thought processes we 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 will be referring to uh, to these sections again and again or if you are familiar with these sections then you can understand the the thought processes easily so the first chapter deals with chitas and second chapter deals with chitasikas and the third chapter deals with chita and it analyzes the chaitas regarding different things like feelings roots functions doors objects and bases so when we go to the fourth chapter then we will make use of the knowledge of these chapters so that we understand them fully now in order to be familiar with the first second and third chapter at least you need to have this chart and then be able to identify the different types of consciousness just by pointing at uh, each triangle or each square so the first one you may say uh, with joy with wrong view and prompted and the second one with joy with with wrong view prompted and so on right and in order to understand the relationship between 
the cheetahs and cheetah seekers, you need to be familiar with the chart on page 112. It would be very difficult to be familiar with this chart, but if you can look at the chart and find out what cheetahs or cheetah seekers uh, associated, I think that that's all right. And for the third chapter, uh, there are uh, diagrams in this book as well as in the handouts. And so you can see from the diagrams how they are analyzed, how in, uh, the types of consciousness are analyzed according to feelings and so on. So after the, the, these three chapters, we will go to the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter is called Viti, Viti Sangha. So this chapter deals with what are called thought processes. The Pali word Viti means a street, a road, a line, or a series. So in this chapter, the following will be dealt with. I do thought process. And five sense door thought process, actually I do thought process is included in five sense door thought process. And then mind or thought process. And among the mind or thought process, they, there are uh, jhana thought process, path thought process. And there is one particular type of thought process called process with guest bhavanga. And then jhanas arising uh, for how many times and so on. And then individuals and the types of consciousness they experience. So these will be dealt with in the fourth chapter. So the fourth chapter mainly deals with what is called Viti. What is the meaning of the word Viti? A street. A street, a road, a series, a line. So the full word should be chitta viti. Chitta means consciousness and viti, a line, a series. So chitta viti means a series of chittas, a series of types of consciousness. But they are called just thought processes, or in this book, cognitive process. So whatever you call it, it is the series of types of consciousness arising as a unit. Now, jitas or types of consciousness arise only one at a time. At one moment, say there is number one chitta, and then that chitta disappears, and in its place there is chitta number two, and then it disappears, and in its place number three chittas, and so on. But when we try to understand how mind works, we have to understand these different types of consciousness arising as a unit. Since they arise uh, one after another, we try to see them as, as a line or as a process. Now you will have the diagrams of the thought processes. But please note that Although we, we try to understand the mind as uh, processes, actually at one moment there is only one, 
one jitta. For example, a thought process consists of 17 thought moments. So in the diagram, all 17 thought moments will be shown. But please do not take that at one moment, there are all these 17 thought moments existing. At one moment, there is only one, one chitta arising. So if we can cut a door on the cardboard and then run the, the diagram of thought process so that you can see only one chitta at a time, it would be very realistic. So please understand that although 17 thought moments or 16 or 15 uh, will be shown on the diagram, they arise just one at a time. So at one moment, there is only one consciousness, one chitta, and not all 17 chittas uh, existing at one moment. Now when we study the thought processes, first we must understand the duration of one thought or one chitta. It is called a moment, chitta moment. And it is said in the books that any time you snap the fingers or any time you close your eyes and open, billions of these the chitas can arise and disappear. So, we will see in a second. So, according to that statement, billions of chitas can arise and disappear in a second. So, the arising of chita is so, so fast, so brief. as though that is not enough. Each, each moment of cheta is divided into three sub-moments. So, we have first one cheta moment, which is about a billionth of a second, not exactly billion, maybe tens of billionth of a second, and that a billionth of a second is divided into three sub moments. So, three sub moments make one cheta moment. Now, these three moments are called, the first one is called arising, when they arise. And then the second moment is called presence. That means after arising, they exist for. Uh, a, a very brief period of time. So that is called the presence moment, present sub-moment. And then disappearing is one sub-moment. So every type of consciousness has these three sub-moments or lasts for these three sub-moments. So the first moment is called arising. And the second moment is called Presence. And the third moment is called dissolution. So every chitta has these three moments. And also we must understand the lifespan of a chitta and a rupa or matter. It is said that matter lasts. 17 times longer than one chitta moment. So the life of one chitta is just three sub-moments. But the life of a material property is 17 chitta moments, that means 51 sub-moments. 
Now again, the life of one chitta moment is three sub moments arising, present, and dissolution. The life of rupa, the life of material property is 17 chitta moments, that is 51 sub moments. Okay, now the arising moment of chitta and the arising moment of rupa, material property, are the same, of the same duration. And dissolution moment of chitta and dissolution moment of rupa are also the same. But the presence moment of chitta and the presence moment of um, rupa are different. So how many sub-moments make the presence moment of a rupa? 49, right? The first, the first presence is the same as the presence of a chitta and the last dissolution is also the same as the dissolution of chitta. But in between there are 49 sub-moments. So these 49 sub-moments are called the present period of a rupa or a material property. So a material property, a, a, a visible object or audible object must last 17 thought moments. So when one one rupa arises and disappears, how many chaitas arise and disappear? 17. Huh? When one Rupa arises and disappears, 17 chaitas arise and disappear. So this is the basic mm, knowledge you need to have before uh, you study the uh, thought processes. So again, how many chaitas can arise in a second? Billions of chaitas. And what is the duration of one chitta? Three sub-moments. And these three sub-moments are arising, presence, and dissolution. And what is the life of rupa, material property? Seventeen thought moments. So, how many sub-moments are there for arising of rupa only one and how many for dissolution of rupa one but how many for presence of rupa 49 okay let us take seeing seeing something seeing an object so we always see something we have seen objects many many times and so we think that the seeing is a simple experience. Not so important because we have been seeing many, many times in our lives. But when you know Abhidhamma, when you know the thought processes and also when you apply your knowledge of the first, second and third chapters to the process, you will see that what you think to be a very ordinary, simple experience is actually a very complex experience. Sometimes scientists talk about cells in the body and so on, and we wonder at them, how did they know? But the same kind of wonder you will experience when you study the thought processes, what seems to be a very simple act is actually a very complex one, so complex that it is almost impossible for us to understand. It is the 
super wisdom of the Buddha that can discover all these intricate happenings in a seemingly simple experience and then to reveal it to the world. So when we see something, we see with with our eyes or with our mind? <laughs> okay, I will leave, I, I will leave it here, right? <laughs> so after the break, then we will pick it up. <laughs> 